sons, the tale of the coming of the Hound of the Baskervilles. In the time of the Great Rebellion of 1641, the manor of Baskerville in the county of Devonshire was held by Hugo of that name, the most wild, profane, and godless man. Quiet! One Michaelmas, this Hugo stole down upon a local farm and carried off a young maiden to Baskerville Hall. I think it's found its voice. Well, decided to thank me, have you? Bastard! 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 (laughs) You little bitch! (laughs) And I'll be back for you later. (laughs) Once you've learned some respect for your betters. In the stress of her fear, the maiden did that which might have daunted the bravest of men. She climbed down from the window of the chamber and ran homeward through the black night across the great dart moor. When Sir Hugo discovered the cage empty and the bird escaped, he became as one that hath a devil. Release the hound! No! You'll never catch her in this. May the hounds of hell take me if I can't. My horse! (laughs) The revelers stood agape, but at length some sense came to their crazed minds, and the whole of them, thirteen in number, started in pursuit. The men came at length to a broad space ringed round with great stones set there in days of old. In the centre lay the unhappy maid, dead of fear and fatigue. Not an arm's length away, still and silent, lay the body of Sir Hugo. The men stayed their horses, frozen deep in terror at the unspeakable sight before them. But it was not the mortal remains which raised the hair upon their heads. The Hound of the Baskervilles by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle with Clive Merrison as Sherlock Holmes and Michael Williams as Dr. John Watson Judy Dench as Mrs. Hudson and Donald Sindon as Sir Charles Baskerville To James Mortimer M.R.C.S. Member of the Royal College of Surgeons I do know what it means, Holmes Of course you do He's a doctor Brilliant, Watson. of the old school. Ah. Who has a country practice and does most of his visiting on foot. Because? This is exactly the sort of old-fashioned walking stick that a successful elderly man would own. And it's only five years old. But look at the state it's in. It could never have got so knocked about in time. Perfectly so. Now, this inscription. To James Mortimer, M.R.C.S., from his Friends of the CCH, September 1884. Hmm, CCH. I'd say that's the something or other hunt, the local hunt. So, an elderly doctor, but still active, with a practice in the country and an interest in outdoor sports. Watson, you may not be luminous, but you're an excellent conductor of light. What on earth is that supposed to mean? May I have the stick? You're saying that my mistakes point you towards the truth. Very kind of you. Here. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm. 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 Interesting. Though, uh... Elementary. Elementary. Mm. 
There stood a foul thing. A great black beast it was, shaped like a hound, yet larger than any hound that ever mortal eye has rested upon. Its body glowed with a flickering glare, and the flames of hell burst from its open mouth. Well, go on then, dazzle me. Hmm. Well, the man's certainly a country doctor, and he walks a good deal. And I was right. Yes, to that extent, but I'm afraid your grave old family practitioner vanishes into thin air. Oh? oh yes, no doubt about it. The gentleman we missed last night's a young fellow under 30, amiable, unambitious, absent-minded, and the possessor of a favourite dog, larger than a terrier and smaller than a mastiff. Even as they looked, the thing tore the throat out of Hugo Baskerville. Then it turned its blazing eyes and dripping jaws upon them. One man died that night of what he had seen, and the rest were but broken men for the rest of their days. Such is the tale of the coming of that demon which has plagued this family so sorely ever since. For know, my sons, that many of our line have been unhappy in their ends, which have been most sudden, bloody, and mysterious, and heralded always by the appearance of the hound. Fear then this spirit, and seek not to hear its cry, for it summons a man of Hugo's blood to his death. A dog. Hmm, no doubt about it. You can just see the teeth marks where he sometimes carries the stick behind his master. Well, what about all the rest? Amiable? He has friends. He was given a testimonial. Mm. Unambitious. He prefers the countryside to the capital. Absent-minded. Oh, think, Watson. He left us his stick. Mm, but not his visiting card. Mm. Oh, all right, I'll grant you the absent-minded. But not the rest. Whatever happened to good heavens, Holmes, that's amazing. Oh, please. You're confusing me with that chap in the Strand magazine. <laughs> <laughs> you find this amusing, Doctor? Well, it does seem somewhat fanciful. Sir Charles... Why are you reading me this? This tale has been passed down from father to son for generations. Do you think we'd have done that if we didn't take it seriously? Forgive me, I didn't mean to be rude. No, you're young. You think you know everything. When you don't, sir, you don't. <clears throat> have you heard what the local people are saying? You surely don't believe such nonsense. Then you have heard. I have, and I pay it no heed. And neither should you. You're a newcomer, Doctor but my family have lived on the moor for centuries. I know the place. I know the people. And if they're saying it, then it's true. The hound has returned. You've got it! Oh, I had no idea where I'd left it. I'm so very glad. I wouldn't lose that stick for the world. A gift, I see. Yes. From Charing Cross Hospital. Well, yes. Much more likely than a hunt for a presentation to a doctor. Pure luck. And given to you when you left the hospital to go into practice on your own. That's absolutely correct. Hmm. No one long established would make such a move, therefore under 30. Hmm? Simplicity itself. But enough of our little games. Sit down, Dr Mortimer, and tell us why you've forsaken your clean air and your healthy walks to consult a specialist in crime. The trap will be round in a moment, Sir Charles. Thank you, Madam Orr. Gentlemen. Sir Charles, this nervous depression is a symptom of your condition, nothing more. Believe that, if it makes you more comfortable, Doctor. It's your comfort I'm concerned with, sir. Nothing can be done for me now. That's unscientific nonsense. Look out there, my friend. The moor is not just hills and lakes and trees and rocks. It's alive. It's a living being. It was there before man... 
and it'll still be there when we are gone and forgotten. It has moods and desires and secrets that your science can only guess at. Sir Charles... It's out there now, Mortimer, waiting. Waiting for me. This manuscript... Early 18th century, unless it's a forgery. The exact date is 1742. Uh, it's a statement of an old family legend. Come to consult me about a legend? No, sir. I've come on a very modern, practical matter. But this manuscript is intimately connected with it, and so, with your permission, I'll read it to you. If you must. All right, all right! Perkins, uh, what's wrong? Oh, doctor... Mr. Barrymore says, can you come straight away? Barrymore? What's happened? For God's sake, man, why have you sent for me? Is Master all right, Mr. Barrymore? Get on with your duties. Go this way, Doctor. Barrymore, wait! Where are we going? The old yew alley that leads out onto the moor. Fear then this spirit and seek not to hear its cry for it summons a man of Hugo's blood to his death. Therefore take heed and remember always this, forbear from crossing the moor in those dark hours when the powers of evil are exalted. Well? Do you find it interesting? Uh, to a collector of fairy tales. Then I'll offer you something more recent. This is from the Devon County Chronicle. On the night of the 4th of June, Sir Charles went out to take a walk in the yew alley behind Baskerville Hall. He did not return. Doctor! Here! All right, Mrs. Barrymore. Try to stay calm. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, thank God you've come. That's enough, Eliza. What happened? I found him here, Doctor. Sent for you straight away. Did you examine him? Didn't need to. <gasps> Hold my bag. Rest in peace, my friend. Hmm. <clears throat> Watson. Mm. Thank you. That article contains all the public facts. And pray, let me have the private ones. Barrymore, give me a hand to turn him over. Doctor. <clears throat> His face. The features were hideously distorted, almost unrecognisable. But you testified to the coroner that he had a weak heart and a history of dyspnea. I would have expected a certain amount of muscular contraction. Not like this. You didn't see it. Nor the way he was lying. Face down, arms out, fingers dug into the ground. And there were no marks on the body? None. All this was said at the inquest. But this wasn't. I withheld this information. Indeed. Sir Charles was a great local benefactor. It's vital that his heir should take up residence and continue the good work. So I told rather less than I knew. Hmm. Uh, go on. While Barrymore was arranging for the body to be taken in, I had a chance to look around. The night had been wet, and I could easily follow Sir Charles's footsteps. Halfway down the alley, there's a gate that leads out onto the open moor. He'd stopped there for some five or ten minutes. How do you know? Because the ash had dropped several times from his cigar. Very good. When he moved on, there was a curious change in his footprints. He appeared to be walking on tiptoe. On his toes? My God. Doctor, is everything all right? Yes, yes. Uh, I'll be there in a moment. Dear God. 
Were there any marks on the ground near the body? Yes. Yes, there were. Some little distance off. Still fresh and clear. Footprints? Footprints. A man's or a woman's? Mr. Holmes, they were the footprints of a gigantic hound. You saw this? As clearly as I see you. Are there any sheepdogs on the moor? This was no sheepdog. It was enormous. Had it approached the body? No. Was the gate of the moor closed? And padlocked. How high is it? About four feet. What marks did you see by the gate? None in particular. You should have called me in at the time. I'd read the whole story in that path. Perhaps. What do you mean? Well... You're surely not telling us his death was supernatural. For some weeks, people had been seeing a creature on the moor. They all agreed that it was huge and glowing, exactly like the hellhound of the legend. Well, if you believe that, then why have you come to consult me at all? You asked me to investigate Sir Charles's death and then tell me he was, he was killed by a ghost? I haven't asked you to investigate Sir Charles's death. Then why did you come here? Because I need your advice. Sir Henry Baskerville arrives from America in uh, exactly an hour and a quarter. Is he the heir? The sole heir. The last of the line. And whether you believe it or not, I think he may be in deadly danger. Mr. Holmes, what should I do? When the night wind howls in the chimney cowls And black dogs bay at the moon holiday, Then is the ghost I know <laughs> Dr. Watson? <laughs> Good evening, Mrs. Hudson. May I have a word with you, please? Oh, dear. What's he done now? Oh, it's the usual thing. It's the smell, Doctor. It gets everywhere. Wouldn't be so bad if he'd only open a window. It can't be good for him. All right, Mrs. Hudson. I'll deal with it. Oh, Mrs. Hudson, the gentleman of call today will be coming back tomorrow morning and bringing Sir Henry Baskerville with him. <sighs> Ten o'clock. Well, I hope they're both fit and well. They'll need to be. I'll see what I can do. Holmes? Good Lord. Oh. You caught a cold, Watson? A cold? It's this poisonous atmosphere. What the devil is it that you put in that pipe? You've been at your club all day. <laughs> oh, please, Holmes. Yes, well, I suppose it is pretty thick now that you come to mention it. Thick? It? It's intolerable. Mrs Hudson is about to throw us out. Really? Really. Couldn't you have let in some air? A concentrated atmosphere helps me to concentrate. Isn't that interesting? Fascinating. Mm. Perhaps I should take it to his logical conclusion and get into a box to think. An excellent yeah. idea. I'll order you one in the morning. Mm. Thank you, thank you. Now, have you quite finished trying to reform me, Doctor? Yes, for the present. Mm? Well, come and have a look at this. Mm. Dartmoor? Yes, I sent out for it. There. Mm. Baskerville Hall. It's very isolated. Apart from the prison. Yeah. Now, it's only inside five miles, but a couple of farms and a few houses. The excellent Devon County Chronicle provides a useful list of the local residents. Here, I marked them for you. Mm -hmm. Arthur Franklin, retired. Mm. Laughter Hall. Jonathan Stapleton, the noted naturalist. Mm -hmm. And his sister. They're at Merripit House. And Mortimer himself. Mm. Yeah. Uh, must be a wild and lonely place. Yes, yes, the settings, a worthy one. Hmm. Now, the devil did decide to meddle in the affairs of men. Oh, surely you're not going over to the supernaturalists, too. Well, the devil's agents can be flesh and blood. Do you think Mortimer will do as you ask and not mention this hound nonsense to Sir Henry? Ah, uh, I believe so. He seems extremely anxious to establish the young man in Devonshire. You think that's suspicious? Have you given it any thought? Yes. What do you make of it? The footprints. Mortimer said that Sir Charles walked on tiptoe half the length of the alley. Now, oh, why should the man tiptoe? He was running. He was running. He was running for his life. Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Good morning. 
and Dr. John H. Watson. I'm very glad to meet you, sir. Sir Henry? Sir Henry. I don't think I'm ever going to get used to that. Hmm. I've enjoyed your stories no end, Doctor. Oh, very kind of you. Oh, I mean it. And you know, it's a funny thing. If Mortimer here hadn't brought me round to you this morning, I might well have come on my own. I've got a little puzzle for you, Mr. Holmes. Indeed. Sir Henry's had a rather disturbing letter. Oh, I, I wouldn't call it disturbing. It's just some kind of damn fool prank. Hmm. May I see it? Sure. Hmm. Thank you. Sir Henry Baskerville, Northumberland Hotel, posted in Charing Cross yesterday evening. Who knew you were staying at the Northumberland? No one. That's the puzzle. Fascinating. Mm. Mm -hmm. Watson? As you value your life or your reason, keep away from them more. Hmm. Words cut out of a newspaper, and anonymous, of course. Here. Mm. Thank you. I think we can draw a few conclusions about the sender. We can? Hmm. He's an educated man who wanted to hide his intelligence. He's almost certainly staying in a cheap hotel, but possibly not alone. And, of course, you know him, Sir Henry, or soon will. Dr. Watson doesn't exaggerate your powers, Mr. Holmes. Oh, you'll find that paper and envelope in a hundred low-grade hotels. The message was put together hurriedly and clumsily. He was afraid of being interrupted, so he didn't have a room to himself. The address is scrawled in capitals, but the message uses words cut from the Times, not a paper you'll find in the hands of the illiterate. But how can you say that Sir Henry knows the man? <laughs> Why else disguise his writing? Mm. Hello, what's this? What? Hmm. Oh, nothing. Uh, Sir Henry, has anything else happened to you since you arrived in London? Why, no. Have you noticed anyone following you or watching you? <laughs> I seem to have walked right into a dime novel. Look, I want to know what's going on here. Mortimer won't tell me a damned thing. He was acting on my advice. Well, I'm tired of everyone knowing more about my affairs than I do. Then I suggest that the two of you return to the Northumberland and go over the whole business. Watson and I will join you for lunch and you can give us your reactions. What do you say? They're stopping again. No one else is. I was certain... Oh, fool! What? I've been looking for someone treading them on foot. You see that cab? Which cab? Come, there they go. Ah, the one just starting off again. That's our man. I can't see inside. Can we get closer? Of course we can. He won't be looking behind him. Now, come on. Wait. What is it? He's seen us. Oh, damn! Drive on! Up there! What made him look this way? Damn and blast the man. Did you see his face? Dark glasses and a black beard. Mm, that was probably false. Oh, damn, 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 damn. damn. It, it was just bad luck. Oh, bad management, more like. Of all the blundering fools. What a pity we didn't get the number of the cab. Do you seriously imagine I neglected that? Number 2704. And we can speak to the cabbie. We've got something. Blundering fool. <laughs> Please, Sir Henry. Don't you Sir Henry me, man. Just what kind of a place are you running here? If you would just step into my office... Oh, I'm not stepping anywhere. I want my property back, and quickly, too. Of course, Sir Henry. I'll see to it personally. Oh, you damn well better. Personally. Johnston, come here. Have you some bother, Sir Henry? Oh, oh, hello, Doctor. We, um, couldn't help overhearing, I'm afraid. Uh, I guess the whole place heard me. Uh, Mr. Holmes. Something's been stolen? Uh, lost, more like. Uh, just one of my boots. You've lost a boot? Oh, brand new, too. Never been worn. It cost me six dollars. It'll turn up. I, I, I should have got steamed up about it. Gentlemen, our table's ready. Excellent. And after lunch, Watson can entertain us with the adventure of the informative cabbie. It was the purest luck. We marched into the cab office to ask about 2704, and there the man was, coming off his shift, Roberts. Rough-looking sort of chap, Welsh. And the fellow said, I've driven my cab these seven years and not a word of complaint. <laughs> he seemed to think I was trying to have him dismissed. <laughs> he changed his tune when we offered him half a sovereign, though. Well, I've had a good day, and no mistake. <laughs> <laughs> and Holmes said, now, my good fellow, 
Tell me all about the fair who followed the two gentlemen down Regent Street this morning. Well, sir, he told me he was a detective. A detective? That's right, sir. And I've heard of him, too. His name was... <laughs> Mr. Sherlock Holmes. The cunning rascal. Are you sure he was following us? Quite sure. But why? We have to assume he means you some harm. What could he do in the middle of London, surrounded by witnesses? Dr. Mortimer, do any of your neighbours on Dartmoor have a full black beard? Why, yes. Uh, Barrymore, Sir Charles's butler. Roberts described his fare as, um, perhaps 40 year of age or more, middle height and dressed like a toff. Well, that's rather vague. I suppose it could be Barrymore. Where is he at the moment? Well, Dartmoor. He's in charge at Baskerville Hall. Yeah, we must find out if he really is there. How can you do that? By sending a telegram to be delivered into his hands only. Mm -hmm. uh, is all ready for Sir Henry, please reply at once, or some such. Yeah, that should let us know by this evening. Did he profit at all by Sir Charles's will? Barrymore and his wife had £500 each. Did they know about that in advance? Oh, yes. Interesting. I hope you don't suspect everyone who was in the will. Sir Charles left £1,000 to me. Tell me about the family. You describe Sir Henry here as the last of the line. And so he is. There were three brothers, Mr. Holmes. My father was the eldest, then Uncle Charles and Uncle Roger. They're all three dead now. My father was the only one who ever married. And if anything were to happen to you? No idea. The title and the estate passed to a distant cousin, uh, the Reverend James Desmond. He's 86 and practically bedridden. Well, Sir Henry, now you know the whole story, what have you decided? Mr. Holmes, my people have lived at Baskerville Hall for centuries. There's no devil in hell and no man on earth going to stop me from doing the same. Excellent. I plan to go down there as soon as possible and carry on my uncle's work. Well said, Sir Henry. You mustn't go alone. I'll be travelling with him. But you have your practice to attend to and your house is miles from the hall. You really think I'm in some kind of danger? Yes, I do. It's kind of hard to believe. You must take a trusty man who'll always be at your side. Well, could you come yourself, Mr. Holmes? I'm in the middle of a case, blackmail, I have to say, in London. Oh. Then who would you recommend? Are you armed? Yes, I thought it best. Good. Never relax your guard. Now remember, the neighbours... The district, anything new on Sir Charles's death. And whatever else seems relevant, but do try to curb your romantic streak. You're not writing it up for the Strand. Not yet. Well, maybe not at all. We can't achieve a happy ending. You really think that's likely? This is an ugly business, Watson. An ugly, dangerous business. I give you my word. I'll be very glad to see you back safe and sound in Baker Street. Holmes... Ah, here they come. Good morning. Morning. Were you followed to the station? Uh, no, I'd swear to it. And Mr. Sherlock Holmes has given up the chase. I beg you to take this more seriously. Sorry. Hmm. Have the two of you always kept together? Except for a couple of hours yesterday afternoon. I went to the College of Surgeons. And I had a stroll round Hyde Park. Alone? Well, yes. That was very imprudent of you. I didn't run into any trouble. You were lucky. Mr. Holmes, this arrived yesterday evening. Yeah. Everything prepared for Sir Henry Barrymore, Baskerville Hall. Well, I suppose it was a long shot. And that's not the only bit of news. But something else has happened. I'll take a look. You found your boot. And lost a different one. Not at the hotel. From my own room. Vanishing boots seem to be the specialty of the house. I'm only sorry I recommended the place. Forget it. It was pretty beat up anyhow. Not quite the thing for the lord of the manor, I guess. <laughs> well, Mr. Holmes, any last instructions? Yes. I want you to remember one thing. What's that? The words of the old legend. Keep away from the moor in the hours of darkness when the powers of evil are exalted. <laughs>
Stop here for a moment, please. Sir? Something wrong, Sir Henry? Not a thing. I just wanted to take it all in. That's fantastic. Ah, I never knew a Devonshire man who didn't swear by his country. A Devonshire man? We lived in a cottage in Kent when I was a boy. And I went straight from there to America when my parents died. This is the first time I've ever set eyes on the moor. Ah, but the Baskervilles have held sway here for centuries. It's in your blood. I'm not going to argue with that. <laughs> Are those buildings, Mortimer? Ruins. Old stone huts and monoliths. Uh, prehistoric, mostly. Prehistoric. That's wonderful. Once you're settled in, you should go and look at some of them. It's like stepping backwards in time. I'll do that. But please, not alone. I've not forgotten my instructions, Doctor. It'll be dark soon. Forgive me, Sir Henry, but we ought to be getting on. Well, I guess I've got the whole rest of my life to look at it. Drive on, Perkins. Sir? Stay exactly where you are. Your names, please. Just what the hell do you think you... Your names, please. We are Doctors Watson and Mortimer. And this gentleman is Sir Henry Baskerville, the new master of this estate. Sir Henry, gentlemen. Good afternoon, Sergeant. Sergeant uh, Cottrell, sir. Second Devon Volunteers. Uh, what's this all about, Sergeant? Prisoner escaped, sir, three days back. We've got men out right across the moor. All of them armed? Yes, sir. We're taking no chances. Gentlemen. Did you know about this, Perkins? Well, everyone knows, sir. Folks are locking their doors. It's Selden, sir. Selden? You know him, Doctor. Of him? Selden, the Notting Hill murderer. Butchered an entire family. Dreadful business. I thought you hanged people like that. There were doubts about his sanity. Well, sane or not, I don't think much of his chances if he's living rough out there somewhere. It's beautiful, but... That wind's coming up. You're right. Okay, Perkins, let's go. Sir, on there! Welcome, Sir Henry. Welcome to Baskerville Hall. I'm pleased to be here, Barrymore. This is Dr. Watson. Doctor? My wife, gentlemen. Good evening, Sir Henry. Doctor, everything's ready for you. Great. You'll stay for dinner, Mortimer. No, I must go. There'll be work waiting for me. And in any case, Barrymore can show you the hall far better than I could. Well, if you're sure. Don't hesitate to send for me if you need me. I'll remember. Thanks for everything. Bye. Goodbye. Don't forget, day or night, Won't you come inside, gentlemen? Not just yet. There's something I want to see first. All right, Barrymore. We'll find our own way back. Sir Henry. So... This is where it happened. Yes. He waited here. He must have been looking out across the open country. As you value your life or your reason, keep away from the moor. Do you really think I'm in danger here? Holmes thinks so. I want to know what you think. I don't know what's happening. Not yet. But something's going on. And whatever I can do to see you through it, I shall. In London, I thought it was all nonsense. Now. No wonder my uncle felt so uneasy all the time. This place is enough to scare any man. I'll have a row of electric lamps up here inside of six months, and you won't know it again. Oh, come on. Let's go in. Perhaps things will look more cheerful in the morning. My dear Holmes, we encountered no trouble on the journey down, which I spent becoming better acquainted with my two companions. 
Mortimer turns out to be something of an amateur anthropologist with a particular penchant for skulls. You'll be fascinated to know that he thought yours of great interest and deeply regrets that he can't immediately add it to his collection. But I detect the words facts, Watson, facts forming on your lips. So, facts. We arrived here at dusk. Baskerville Hall is gloomy and forbidding, and the surrounding landscape is like something out of a fantastic dream. The Barrymores are distant and reserved. Sir Henry seems understandably subdued. Tomorrow I shall begin to follow your instructions and start gathering information. For the present, I wish you good night. Good morning. Look at this place. Have you ever seen such a difference in a room? There's nothing quite like sunlight through stained glass. That paneling's glowing like bronze. Last night... Uh... Go on, say it. I won't be offended. Last night was like eating dinner in a mausoleum, complete with pictures of the inhabitants. Well, your ancestors don't seem quite so disapproving this morning. Most of them, at least. <laughs> Help yourself to breakfast. Ah. There's enough for a regiment. Is the food not satisfactory, Sir Henry? Good morning, Barrymore. Sir? Doctor? If the food isn't to your liking, sir... The food is fine. Please thank your wife. Very good, sir. If you'll excuse me. Just a moment, Barrymore. Doctor? Did you hear a woman crying during the night? You heard that too? I thought I must have been dreaming. I heard it. What about you, Barrymore? Well, man? My wife is the only woman in the house, Sir Henry. The sound could not have come from her. Will that be all? Yes, you can go. Sir Henry. What do you make of him? I don't know yet. But he certainly could have been the man in the cab. I must check about that telegram. I'm certain I heard that crying. You did. Grimpin is about a four-mile walk, sir. Just follow the path. You can't miss the post office. It's the village shop as well. Thank you, Mrs. Barrymore. My husband will wait for you in the library, Sir Henry. Right. I wish I could join you, Doctor, but I've got enough paperwork to go through to last me a week. Say hello to Mortimer for me, if you see him. I will. And please remember... I know. No wandering off on my own. I'm not too certain I should leave you alone at all. I can look after myself. You go and cross-examine the postmaster. Well, yes, sir. I remember the telegram very well, sir. To be given it in Mr. Barrymore's own hands. My boy James took it to the hall straightway. And he gave it to Barrymore, personally? He gave it to Mrs. Barrymore, sir. Old John was up in the loft. How do you know that? Well, Mrs. Barrymore said so. So your boy didn't actually see him at all? Well, no. Then how do you know he was really there? Well, surely his own wife ought to know where he is. Didn't he get the telegram? Is there some sort of complaint? No, no complaint. I want to send a wire to London. Oh, here you are, sir. Thank you. Good morning, Dr. Watson. But, uh, good morning. Forgive me. I didn't mean to startle you. We're homely folk here on the moor. We don't wait for formal introductions. I'm Stapleton. Stapleton of Mary Pitt House. The naturalist. Uh, yes. Well, entomologist, principally. I'm delighted to meet you. How did you know who I was? My friend, Dr Mortimer, described you to me. How's Sir Henry? None the worse for the journey, I hope. Ah, uh, he's well, thank you. Good, good. I was afraid that he might refuse to come down and bury himself here. Why should he do that? He's a wealthy man. He could live wherever he pleased. This is his family home. 
And he wasn't put off by the dreadful legend. Splendid. Oh, but perhaps you don't know about that. I've heard of it. And has Mr. Sherlock Holmes? I beg your pardon? Oh, come now, Dr. Watson. We know about you, even in this backwater. And if you're here, it's obvious that Sherlock Holmes is interesting himself in our little community. I'm afraid I can't comment on that. Oh, very right. And proper. I, I shouldn't have asked. My apologies. No offence, I hope. None in the least. Oh, good. Good. Thank you. Please don't mention it. Now, if you'll excuse me. Oh, of course, of course. Forgive me. Welcome to the moor. Thank you. What? Go back. Go straight back to London. At once. Who are you? For God's sake, do what I say. Get away from the moor at all costs. Go back to London while there's still time. But why? What's the danger? Ariel. Oh. You're Miss Stapleton. Hello again. Hello. I was pursuing a Cyclopides, and I heard your voices. You've introduced yourselves, I see. Yes. I was just telling Sir Henry... No, 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 no. I'm not Sir Henry. What? Dr. John Watson, at your service. Then we've been talking at cross purposes. Uh, you hardly had time for talk. Uh, it was a foolish misunderstanding, Jack. Forgive me, Dr. Watson. Of course, but... Come along, Beryl. Make... Dr. Watson's in a hurry. We mustn't detain him. No, please, don't rush away. Beryl. I must. I'm sorry. Forget what I said. Forget it. How can I? Beryl, come along. You must. Please. <gasps> Good God. What was that? The peasants say it's the phantom hound. The hound of the basketballs. That was the weirdest thing I've ever heard in my life. Oh, it's the mud settling or the water rising or something. Queer place. The moor. Please, come in. Good walk? I'm not interrupting. Uh, yes, you are. And very welcome it is, too. Uh, I'm not cut out for all this paperwork. Did you run into Mortimer? No, but I met the Stapletons. Oh, the bug hunter and his sister. What are they like? He's a rather nervous sort. Jittery. Hmm. What about her? Well? She is one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen. You don't say. Oh, yes. And what's more, she mistook me for you. Well, we can't have that. I'll have to arrange for her to meet the real thing, and as soon as possible. <laughs> it sounds wonderful. Yes, indeed. Oh, America's a rare country, but I'm a Devonshire man at heart. I'm delighted to hear it. We need a Baskerville at the hall. Is it the countryside that attracts you, or the people? Oh, definitely both. That's good. <laughs> Stapleton's right. It's good to have you here. Thank you, Mr. Franklin. I hope you'll exercise a firm hand. The local people will respect you for it. Mr. Franklin is a great believer in the power of authority, Sir Henry. What I believe in is the law. Mr. Franklin is our local expert. Ah, you're a lawyer, sir. No, sir. Never made a penny profit from the law in my life. Only took it up once I retired. Must be an interesting hobby. It's not a hobby at all. Astronomy is my hobby. I watch the stars for pleasure. I study the law because I must. Because you must? Someone's got to put a stop to things. Too many people these days seem to think they can carry on exactly as they like. Don't you agree, Watson? That's certainly true of London. I don't know about down here. They have to be shown what's right and what's wrong. How many cases have you got on at the moment, Franklin? Cases? Uh, Mr. Franklin delights in litigation. Is it six or seven, Mr. Franklin? Seven, Miss Stapleton. Seven. Good Lord. What sort of cases do you bring? Anything you care to name, sir. And on either side, I don't much care. I closed three footpaths last month, then sued the local ramblers for trespass. Back in March, I forced old Widden to pull down his barn because he'd built it over a public right-of-way. Either side, don't much care. So long as I'm upholding the law. Well, I suppose that's commendable. I'd advise you to watch your step, Sir Henry. I beg your pardon? No one's above the law, sir. Not even the lord of the manor. I watched your uncle, and I'm watching you. Believe me. I do believe you. Thanks for the warning. And as for you, Mortimer, 
If you dig up any more skulls from that Barawan long down, I'll have you for opening a grave without the permission of the next of kin. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think of our county, Dr. Watson? The moor is astonishing. I think it affects everything on it and around it. That sounds rather sinister. No, that's not what I meant. It has charm as well as mystery. And beauty, too. Well, I, for one, will happily drink to the beauty of the moor. The beauty, the beauty of, the of the moor. Of the moor. <clears throat> You're quite right, Sir Henry. It is a wonderful place. So vast and barren, and rarely what it seems. How's that? Well, for instance, you've seen that great flat plain off to the north? Oh, yes, of course. Rare place for a gallop. I don't advise you to try it, sir. Not if you value your life. What do you mean? That plain is the great Grimpen Mire. It's a maze of marsh and quicksand. Oh, good Lord. It's bad enough in the summer, but with all these autumn rains... Mm. One false step means death. Oh, I've had some rare specimens from there. You braved it, then? Many times. I'll try my luck at it someday. For God's sake, don't do it. Your blood would be on my head. You must know the moor very well, Stapleton. I flatter myself that I do. So you've been here a long time? Barely three years. The locals call us newcomers. Ah. Where did you live before? In the north. I ran a school. Just a small, private place. Why did you give it up? Well, there was an epidemic. Some of the boys didn't recover. It must have been dreadful for you. Yes. Yes, it was. I think we could do with some more wine. <clears throat> Barrymore, fetch a couple of more bottles, would you? Yes, sir. I must say, Sir Henry, how saddened we all were by your uncle's death. Yes, yes. indeed. Thank you, Stapleton. All of you. I suppose it wasn't entirely unexpected. His heart, you mean? Yes. He didn't exactly help matters. Put himself under a lot of extra strain. Strain, Mr. Franklin? He means that poor old Sir Charles was worrying himself to death anyway. I'm sorry, Sir Henry, but it's true. Uh, the legend, yes, uh, I know. Well, he was an old man. He lived alone. He had some strange notions. Many of the local people believe in the Hound. You shouldn't ignore them. Beryl. Miss Stapleton is right. You shouldn't ignore the story. Oh, come on, Mortimer. I can't just brush it aside, Sir Henry. Seen it yourself, have you, Mortimer? <laughs> yes. I have. What? It was just a few days before he died. I was attending your uncle here at the hall... It was dark when I left, and he came with me to the door. Suddenly, he stared past me. The look in his eyes. I, I turned round. And? And I saw it. Huge and black and glowing. And then it was gone. Poppycock! Oh, begging your pardon, Miss Stapleton. Franklin's right. It must have been a sheepdog or a wild calf wandered in from the open moor. I know what I saw. Why didn't you mention this in London? Would you have believed me then? Any more than you believe me now? I believe you. Beryl. This moor's a horrible place. There are terrible things here. That's enough, Beryl. You'll be scaring Sir Henry away. Oh, there's no danger of that. Good shot, Doctor. Oh, this is no contest, I'm afraid. Oh. Mm, hard luck. Luck has nothing to do with it. I know when I'm outmatched. It's been quite an evening. I really don't know what to make of Mortimer. No. Maybe he'd just been around my uncle too long. Some of the old boy's ideas were starting to rub off. We mustn't let this nonsense about the hound blind us to the other business. You still think I'm in some kind of danger? We've been here a week and nothing's happened. You were followed in London. You were sent a threatening letter. Something is happening. 
You see? Outmatched. Thank you. Um, tell me something. What, Sir Henry? Sir Henry. Look, just give me your opinion. Man to man. What about you? Oh, come on, Watson. What did you think of her? <laughs> what? I thought your mind wasn't on the game. Brilliant deduction. <laughs> It can't be much of a life for her down here. I wonder if she's lonely. This is a godforsaken part of the world. When you go out onto the moor, you leave all traces of modern England behind you, and you're conscious everywhere of the forgotten folk the prehistoric people who once lived and worked and played here. On all sides as you walk are their graves, the ruins of their houses, and the huge monoliths which mark their temples. As the place fills your heart and your mind, its vastness and grim charm take hold of you, and you leave your own age far behind. I have to report that Sir Henry begins to display a considerable interest in our fair neighbour. It's not to be wondered at, for time here hangs heavily for an active man like him, and she is a very fascinating and beautiful woman. The match would be a fine and fitting one, but a romance would surely add to all our other complications. The Barrymores continue to puzzle me. Sir Henry tackled the butler on the subject of the telegram, and his story agreed with the postmasters in every particular. But there is something singular and questionable in the man's character, and I'm convinced that he's telling us far less than he knows. More than once, I've observed him roaming the corridors at night. I picture him bent on some sinister, secret mission of which we know nothing, which you, no doubt, will dismiss as my romantic imagination. Nevertheless, I am... <laughs> Don't move a muscle. What? And when I take my hand away, don't make a sound. Understand? All right. Okay. <laughs> what the devil? Quiet, for God's sake. What's going on? Come with me. Look round this corner. Far end of the corridor. Barrymore. Yes. What's he up to? I don't know. But he's being damn secretive about it. What do you want to do? Barrymore? Uh, uh, Sir Henry? Just what are you playing at? Uh, nothing, Sir Henry. Checking the window, that's all. I go round every night to see that they're fastened. On the second floor? Yes, sir. All the windows. Give me the candlestick, Barrymore. Sir Henry? Do as you're told. Yes, sir. Right. Now, let's see. Watson? I thought so. Look, out on the moor. Another light. Well, it's nothing, sir. Nothing at all. Nothing, is it? Move your candle again, Watson. There. Someone's signaling the house. What the hell's happening, Barrymore? I... I have nothing to say, sir. We'll see about that later. Watson, are you with me? What do you mean? I'm going out there. God only knows what Holmes would say about this. Come on, we can clear this whole thing up here and now. Oh, for heaven's sake, stay close to me. We must be nearly there. There's the light. Yes. Can you see anyone? Not yet. Oh, great God, what was that? I don't know. Just a sound they have on the moor. What do the local people call it? Uh, Tell me. They say it's the cry of the hound of the Baskervilles. Summoning a man of Hugo's blood to his death. Do you want to go back? Do you believe in this hellhound? No, I don't. Neither do I. But, my God. 
I don't think I'm a coward, Watson, but that sound. Could it really be true? It's a legend, that's all it is. Sure. Sure. Okay, come on. Let's get on with this. What the devil? Get a look out! Are you all right? Sir Henry. Yeah, I'm all right. What happened? That rock didn't push itself. Come out and show yourself. We're armed. Perhaps he's gone. Perhaps. God, Watson. I'm as cold as ice. That shock. We ought to go back. Yeah, okay. I wonder what Barrymore's got to say for himself anyway. Come on, then. My God. What? What is it? On that rock. Against the moon. Where? He's gone. You saw him? Could you see who it was? No. No, I couldn't. Come on. Let's get you home. I have nothing to say. Who's out there? Who was signaling the house? I'm sorry, sir. It's my business, not yours. You're plotting against me and it's none of my business? I'm not plotting against you, Sir Henry. Then tell me what the hell's going on! Did you have any part in Sir Charles's death, Barrymore? No, sir, I did not. Did you send Sir Henry a threatening letter? I know nothing about any letter, sir. Did you follow him and Dr. Mortimer in London? In London? No, sir. I give you my word. Your word? And what's that worth, huh? I'm sorry you feel that way, sir. You want to prove your loyalty, man, you start talking, and fast. Okay. You leave my employment straight away and you go in disgrace. Very well, sir. If I must, I must. Tell him, John. Eliza, no. Tell him what, Mrs. Barrymore? Sir Henry, John has done nothing except for my sake. And because I asked him. Speak out, then. What does this all mean? There's no plot against you, sir. The lights are signaled to... someone out on the moor. To say that food's ready for him. Food? Who are you giving food to? My brother, sir. Your brother? Selden, the escaped prisoner. Yes, sir. My God. Every second night we signal, sir. And if he signals back, I take out some bread and a bit of meat. But, but the police said he'd gone. Got clear away. That's what they think, sir. And the soldiers, too. But he's still out there, and I can't desert him. Mrs. Barrymore, do you know what this man did? She knows, Doctor. Oh, terrible things. Dreadful, terrible things. But he's ill, sir. He's sick. He dragged himself here to the hall one night. He was weak and starving and... and his mind... it's... <laughs> he's like a child, sir. He's not got the mind of a man, not anymore. He's got mind enough to try to kill us just now. <gasps> oh. well, he wouldn't have... he wouldn't have known what he was doing, sir. I... I, I swear it. Is this possible, Watson? There have always been doubts about his sanity. <laughs> oh. And then the prison and living rough out on the moor. Yes. Yes, it's quite possible. Good Lord. It's the truth, sir, as I'm a Christian woman. If there's blame in the matter, it's not with my husband, but with me. It was for my sake he's done all that he has. Is that right, Barrymore? Yes, Sir Henry. Every word of it. Well, I can't blame you for standing by your own wife. You can forget what I said about leaving. Thank you, Sir Henry. Go to bed, you two. We'll talk more about this in the morning. Thank you, sir. Come on, Eliza. Uh, uh. Come on. Well, what in the world do you make of that?
So, Holmes, one mystery has come and gone at least. But the fog hasn't lifted. I have a new mystery for you to take its place. The man I saw on the moor tonight was not the convict. He was much too far away, and besides, I felt an absolute conviction that he'd been standing there, silhouetted against the moon, for quite some time, watching us. He stood with his arms folded and his head bowed, as if he were brooding over the wilderness. He might have been the very spirit of that terrible place, vast and grim and bleak. After much thought, I have decided to say nothing of this to Sir Henry, at least for the present. Tomorrow, if the weather clears, we are invited on an excursion across the moor. Sir Henry is keenly looking forward to it. I have my reservations. We could be delivering ourselves all unknown to the very doorstep of that solitary watcher. The longer one stays here, the further the moor sinks into one's soul. I have awaited my heart and a terrible feeling of impending danger. Watson, come in. Give me your opinion on something. How are you feeling this morning? I'm all right. Mrs. Barrymore, tell the doctor what you just told me. Yes, sir. Well, we've made all the arrangements, Doctor. And in a few days, my unhappy brother will be on his way to South America. South America? That's right, sir. And we came to ask Sir Henry and yourself, Doctor. I'm begging you, sir. Don't tell the police what happened last night. Mrs. Barrymore... If I... they know he's still here, they'll send out the search parties again. They'll shoot him on sight, Doctor. I'm worried about those isolated houses. The Stapletons... He won't go near any houses, sir. He's... He's too scared to, like I told you. He'll never trouble anyone again. I can promise you that, Sir Henry. I, I don't know. What do you say, Watson? He's probably no threat if he's left alone. Will he be looked after in South America? He will, sir. It's all arranged. Well, then. Thanks, Watson. OK, Barrymore, I agree. God bless you, sir. Thank you, Sir Henry. And you, Dr. Watson. Fine way to start out. Compounding a felony. This is very kind of you, Miss Stapleton. Yes, indeed. It's my brother you have to thank, gentlemen. Uh, then thank you, sir. Oh, it's my pleasure. I never tire of showing off the moor. <laughs> Beryl says I'll not be satisfied until everyone loves the place as much as I do. And knows it as well. Ah, now that would take real dedication. You'd have to study it day and night in all its seasons and all its moods. Its moods? You make it sound like it's alive. Your uncle thought it was. Good Lord. Ah, it really is gorgeous this morning. It's a different place in the daylight. That's for sure. You've been out on it at night? Uh, just the once. Was that wise? I thought you didn't believe in all that hound business. <laughs> what the devil? Hello? Mortimer. Morning. Whoa, there. Good morning, Miss Stapleton. Gentlemen. Morning. 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 Lovely day for a ride. Join us. I wish I could, but duty calls, I'm afraid. Oh, Sir Henry, Watson, you've not met Yorick, have you? <laughs> Yorick? Say hello, Yorick. <laughs> <laughs> so, Yorick. Not carrying your master's walking stick today. How on earth do you know he does that? Oh, I can't claim the credit, I'm afraid. Holmes deduced it from looking at the stick. Oh, I must remember not to leave anything of mine lying around where Mr. Holmes can find it. <laughs> I really should press on. You'll excuse me? Sure. Uh, drop by the hall sometime. Don't wait for an invitation. I shall. Enjoy your ride. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Where are you off to? Somewhere jolly? The men came at length to a broad space ringed round with great stones, set there in days of old. In the centre lay the unhappy maid, dead of fear and fatigue. Not an arm's length away, still and silent, lay the body of Sir Hugo. Just there. That's what the locals say. 
So this is the place? Well, it certainly fits the description, doesn't it? There's a real chill to the air. I wouldn't call it a pleasant spot. I think it's an awful place. Why have you brought us here, Jack? I thought Sir Henry should come here. Part of his family history. Only if you believe the story. I'm glad to have seen it. There you are, Beryl. Sir Henry's inherited the Baskerville courage. You have to admit, Watson, it's a fitting place for a demon or two. The sort of place that would make a man believe, even if he didn't want to. Don't you think so, Doctor? I prefer to believe in science, Mr. Stapleton. Perhaps the supernatural's just science we haven't discovered yet. And perhaps it's just a lot of fairy stories and mumbo-jumbo. Perhaps it is. <gasps> Was that... No, it wasn't. It's a pony. In agony, by the sound of it. I'm afraid you're quite right. Where, where is it? Oh. Where? Do you see? The mire. What's wrong with it? It's caught in the quicksand. Oh, it's horrible. Oh, will it get free? No. They never do. There. It's a bad place. The great Grimpin mire. Didn't I say so? Many more meals like tonight. My new outfits are going to be too tight. Have they arrived yet? Tomorrow. And then I'll really look the part. Squire of the manor. I want to do this thing right. Fit in. Impress the locals? Never crossed my mind. <laughs> it's going to be a big day tomorrow. The architects are coming up from Plymouth. Ah, you're having some work done? I want the hall to be a real showcase. Modern, you know? I know. It'll be good for the area. I'll use local people for the work. Take on more staff. What are you smiling at? I'm sorry, I was just thinking you're going to fit in extremely well. The brandy, Sir Henry. Oh, right. Uh, just put it down. We'll serve ourselves. Very good, sir. Something the matter, Barrymore? I was wondering if I might have a word, Sir Henry. Sure. Mm, would you like me to leave? Uh, I believe you'll be interested in this, Doctor. Stay put, Watson. Mm. Okay, Barrymore. What is it? Yes, sir. Well, um... You've been so kind to us, sir. I'd like to do the best I can in return. I know something, sir, about Sir Charles' death. Do you know how he died? No, Doctor, I don't know that. What then? I know why he waited at the Moor Gate at that hour. It was to meet a woman. A woman? My uncle? Yes, sir. What was this woman's name? I can only tell you her initial, sir. L.L. How do you know all this, Barrymore? Here, Doctor. Watson? It's uh, a fragment from a letter. A postscript, I think, and it's slightly charred. I think the rest must have been burnt. Well, that's right, sir. My wife found that in the grate in Sir Charles' study just a few weeks ago. We hadn't been in there since he passed away. And you didn't tell anyone? Well, the inquest was over long since, sir. We didn't know who to tell. It is definitely a woman's hand. Uh, ple please, please, as you are a gentleman, burn this letter and be, and be at the gate by 10 o'clock. L, L. Mm, L, L. It's possible, of course, Holmes, that this letter had nothing whatsoever to do with Sir Charles's death. But I find that hard to believe. Tomorrow I plan to inquire after anyone with those initials. The post office in the village will be an excellent starting point. My thoughts keep returning to the man I saw on the moor. Sir Henry was followed in London and is followed still. A stranger in the district would have caused immediate comment. So I believe that, like the wretched Selden, He's hiding out somewhere in that God-forsaken wilderness. If I could lay my hands on that man, then we might find ourselves at the end of all our difficulties. But to track him down in that great barren landscape without a single clue to his whereabouts is surely impossible. My great fear is this. 
For how much longer will this mysterious watcher hold off his hand? I'm certain that he is the source of the danger I feel so keenly. With the Barrymore's loyalty now beyond question, the hall at least is safe. But whenever Sir Henry ventures abroad, I and my revolver are never far from his side. Good morning, Dr. Watson. Good morning, Mrs. Barrymore. Ah, oh, breakfast smells as good as ever. Thank you, sir. Sir Henry's late down this morning? Oh, no, sir. Sir Henry's been gone half an hour or more. Gone? Gone where? For a walk, he said, across the moor. My hat and coat. Quickly. Good morning, Beryl. Sir Henry, what are you doing here? Getting to know the neighbours. Is your brother in? No, he's out on the moor, but he'll back soon. You must leave now. Leave? Am I that repulsive to you, Beryl? No, of course not. Well then, let me stay. For a while, at least. Show me your house. Listen, please. If you really do care for me, you must leave the moor. Today, now. You're in great danger here. Danger? What danger? This is an evil place. How can it be? With such beautiful things in it. Beryl? Sir Henry? No. You mustn't, please. But why? What's the matter? Get away from my sister, sir! Oh. Good morning, Stapleton. What do you think you're doing? How dare you force yourself on a lady? Oh, now, just a minute. Do you think just because you have a title, you can behave as you please? Leave us, Beryl. Jack! Leave us! Now, explain yourself, sir. No, Stapleton. You explain yourself. By God, if you weren't the lady's brother... Leave, sir! You'll not touch so much as the tips of her fingers. Are you going? You pathetic little fool. What right do you have to keep her from me? A brother's right. Good day to you, Sir Henry. Sir Henry! Watson? Sir Henry. Are you all right? Where the devil have you dropped in from? I followed you. You shouldn't have gone off alone. Alone? Anything but, it seems. You saw all that, did you? Yes, I did. You in the back row, him right up front. The whole damn countryside seems to have turned out to watch me do my wooing. I'm sorry. I realized where you were going, but I couldn't leave you unprotected. You heard what Holmes said. Yeah, I, I, I suppose I can't blame you. Thank you. Did he ever strike you as being crazy, this brother of hers? Oh, I can't say that he did. No, nor me. Until today, at least. Oh, come on, let's walk back together. Did you bring your pistol? Yes. Good. She may have some more relatives about. Uh, yes. Excuse me, Sir Henry. Oh, Watson. Come and have a look at these. Ah, the architects have arrived. Oh, they're out measuring or whatever it is they do. What do you think? You're going to raise a few eyebrows. <laughs> well, this place could do with a breath of fresh air. Are you off to the village? Yes. And you? I'm going to be tied up with this for hours. Don't you worry about me. Excuse me, Sir Henry. What is it, Barrymore? A gentleman to see you, sir. Mr. Stapleton. Are you sure you want me to stay? Extremely sure. Mr. Stapleton, gentlemen. Well, sir? I've come to apologize. Go on. My rudeness this morning, quite unforgivable. You have to understand, Sir Henry, my sister is everything in my life. We, we've always been together, and the thought of losing her... I'm glad you appreciate her worth, Stapleton. I've always been a lonely man when we had to close the school. It was terrible. If it hadn't been for Beryl, well, I, I suppose I've always known that someday, somebody would appear. I just need time to get used to the idea, that's all. Anyway, I'm truly sorry. Well, that's a handsome apology. Give me your hand, Stapleton. 
Sir Henry, thank you. Won't you and the doctor be our guests for dinner at Mary Pitt House? Shall we say Friday? It's hardly Baskerville Hall, of course, but we'll do our best. Friday it is. Oh, well, thank you. I know Beryl will be delighted. Thank you again. Goodbye. Well, well, well. Dr. Watson! Dr. Mortimer, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Going to the village? Yes, posting off another report to hope. Climb up. I'm heading that way. Thank you. Walk on. No Yorick today? He's disappeared. Wandered out onto the moor and never came back. Oh, I'm sorry. But he'll turn up. You know what dogs are. I had a bull pup once who was always wandering off somewhere. <laughs> Used to drive home as wild. No, he's gone. This moor can be deadly. Poor little chap wouldn't have stood a chance. That's rotten luck. Thank you. So, Watson, are you any nearer solving the mystery? Found any real clues yet? Yes, yes, I have. Indeed? Am I allowed to know what? I can't really say anything without Holmes' permission, you understand. Of course, quite right. But maybe you could help me with one thing. Anything? You must know just about everyone who lives around here. Is there a woman with the initials LL? LL? Laura Lyons? But she's not really local. She lives in Coombe Tracy. Uh, that's some miles away. Laura Lyons? Hmm. She runs a typewriting business. Started it when her husband deserted her. Her father disowned her when she married without his leave, then refused to take her back afterwards. That's damned harsh. Yes. Poor old Sir Charles tried to plead the girl's case, but it all fell on stony ground, I'm afraid. Got quite heated, actually. Did it now? Well, you've met the man. You've seen what he's like. She's old Franklin's daughter. Please, sit down, Dr. Watson. Thank you. How can I help you? It's about the late Sir Charles Baskerville. You knew him, I believe. I owe a great deal to his generosity. But for Sir Charles and a few other kind people, I might well have starved. Did you correspond with him? I wrote to him once or twice to thank him for his kindness. Did you ever write asking him to meet you? Certainly not. Not on the very day of his death? No, no. Why are you asking me this, sir? Why did you come here? In order to avoid a public scandal. A scandal? This is a very delicate matter. Surely it's better that we talk quietly about it here rather than have it pass out of our control. Please cooperate with me, Mrs. Lyons. Very well. Did you write to Sir Charles arranging a meeting on the night he died? No, sir, I did not. I'm truly sorry to press you, Mrs. Lyons, but this is extremely important. Please look at this. Is there no such thing as a gentleman? You do Sir Charles an injustice. He did burn the letter as you asked. This scrap is all that's left. Well, why should I deny it? I'm not ashamed of what I did. I must ask you for the details. A great deal may hang on your words. Very well. I'll tell you all I can. Full details in next report. Watson. Ah, postmaster. To be sent straight away. Very good, sir. That will be... Uh... It'd be one shilling and nine pence, please. Mm. Thank you, sir. Is there anything for me from London? Oh, there is, Doctor. Sent this afternoon. Metropolitan Borough of St. Marylebone. Same as all the others. Here. <sighs> Save the romancing for the Strand. Facts. Holmes. <sighs> Same as all the others. Congratulate me, sir! Mr. Franklin? This is a great day for me, sir. One of the red-letter days of my life. I've forced them to close the wood where the Fernworthy folk used to picnic. Why on earth have you done that? These infernal people swarming everywhere with their papers and their bottles have been shown that the law is the law. Oh, congratulations. Someone has to exert some authority here, sir. 
Sir Charles was too lax by half, too easily distracted by a pretty face or a hard luck story. And Sir Henry? He'll be weighed in the balance, same as his uncle. And if he's found wanting? Close the wood, sir. Close the wood. Oh, they call me a crank, but I know a thing or two. This convict fellow now, gone away, they say. Poppycock. He's no more gone away than you have. You know where he is? I do, sir. I've seen the messenger who takes him his food. And no doubt you'll be prosecuting this wretched man for aiding a criminal. Man, sir? It's a child. Some peasant urchin. A child? Every day. I see him through my telescope. The same time every day. He goes up to Bellevator. This Seldon's obviously camped out in one of the old stone huts. Ha! It's a clear case of illegal occupancy. Tell me, sir, what's your opinion? Sha! Come out of the hut very slowly. I'm armed. I want to know who you are and why you've been following Sir Henry Baskerville. Do you hear me? Very well. Very well. Well, I'm in no hurry. I can wait. It's a lovely evening, Watson. Holmes. I really think you'll be more comfortable outside than in. There you are. Mm, the glassware isn't up to Mrs. Hudson's standard, but it'll serve. Thank you. Mm. <clears throat> I had no idea you'd found me until I was virtually outside the door. Uh, my footprint. Your tobacconist. What? A cigarette stub marked Bradley's Oxford Street will always tell me that my friend Watson's in the neighbourhood. Here. You see? I found it on the path. You threw it away as you approached the hut. You paused, probably to wish your challenge in those admirably commanding tones of yours, and then, receiving no reply, drew your revolver. Cocked my revolver. It was already drawn. Cocked your revolver and stormed the hut. Oh, really, Holmes? You found it empty. You looked around. You decided that the mysterious occupant would sooner or later return, and you sat in ambush. Correct? Yes, uh, correct. It was unforgivably clumsy of me. What was? By letting you see me the night you went after the convict. You, you, you really didn't recognise me. Would I have gone through this whole ridiculous escapade if I had? No, uh, well, no, I suppose not. So, you didn't know who I was, but you were determined to find out. <laughs> Yes, excellent. And so you searched all the huts until you came to this one. Well done, Watson. No, your boy was seen bringing you out supplies. I knew exactly where to look. Ah. Well, well done anyway. How long have you been here? I thought you were in Baker Street. That's exactly what I wanted you to think. I thought you trusted me. My dear fellow. Why keep me in the dark? And what about my reports? All wasted. Do you know how much time and trouble went into them? My dear fellow, here are your reports. And very well thumbed, I assure you. They've been reaching me after only a day's delay. But why the deception? Damn it all, Holmes. I'm not a child. Believe me, Watson, I'm sorry it was necessary. I had to be an unknown factor in this business. Even to me? Especially to you. You don't try to contact me or, or bring me out some comfort or other. I couldn't let you take that risk. Well, 
I'm glad to see you. Thank you. And since you've come, I assume I was right. There is danger here. It's murder, Watson. Refined, cold-blooded, deliberate murder. Have you left Sir Henry in safe hands? Yes, at Baskerville Hall. I had to go to Coombe Tracy to speak to Laura Lyons. Excellent. I was going to see her tomorrow. You know about her? Well, no details. Uh, what did she tell you? She wrote to Sir Charles asking him to meet her on the day of his death. She needed funds for a divorce, but she didn't keep the appointment. She didn't go. Why not? Because at the last moment, someone else gave her the money. <sighs> I knew it. This is the key to everything. Oh, well done, Watson. Well, I'll wager she wouldn't say who this someone else was. No, she wouldn't. Said it would place the gentleman in an impossible position. <laughs> Gentleman be damned. He's as deep a villain as we've ever encountered. You know who it is? I do. And thanks to you, my case against him's almost complete. The great danger is that he may strike before we're ready for him. <gasps> Sir Henry! Come on, Watson! The edge. Watson. Down there. Sir Henry. Oh, Holmes, I'll never forgive myself for leaving him. I'm more to blame than you. I shouldn't have waited. I swear to you, Watson, the man responsible is going to pay dearly for this. Oh, no. Stay here. We'll send for help, Holmes. You can't carry him by yourself. <laughs> Holmes, are you mad? Beard? I'm coming down. <laughs> Look, Watson. Look. It's not so Henry. But the clothes. It's seldom. It's my neighbor, the convict. Paramore. Sir Henry gave him some old clothes to get rid of. Yeah, so those clothes have been the poor fellow's death. They still carry Sir Henry's scent. His scent? What are you saying? Shh. What's that light? Hello? Hello? Watson. Over here! Dr. Watson? Oh, you're the last person I expect. Mr. Holmes. Good evening, sir. I fear you have me at a disadvantage. I'm Stapleton of, of Mary P... Dear me. What's this? Sir Henry? Who's this? It's Selden, the man who escaped from the prison. What happened to him? Did you see? No. We just found him here. He must have missed his footing in the dark. His neck is broken. So, that's the notorious murderer. Well... Now we can all sleep soundly again. <laughs> he must have slipped in the darkness and fallen. I'm truly sorry to have been the bearer of such bad news, Mrs Barrymore. We appreciate your feelings, Mr Holmes. Thank you. Drink this, Mrs Barrymore. Oh. It'll help you sleep. Oh, thank you, Doctor. Take your wife up, Barrymore. We'll serve ourselves tonight. Thank you, sir. Come on, Eliza. Uh, thank you, Sir Henry. Gentlemen. I knew something dreadful was going to happen. I knew it. That moor is evil. Evil! God knows, Mr. Holmes, I'm glad to see you. But no luggage at all? No, no, no. Was it lost on the journey or what? Mm, something like yes, that. It's not important. Now, Sir Henry, I need your help. What can I do? You can swear to me that you'll carry out any instructions I give you blindly and to the letter without asking the reason. You have my word. Thank you. If you do, then... <clears throat> Holmes? Whatever's the matter? Uh, well, Watson insists that I know nothing about art. What? That is a, 
Yes, that's a fine series of family portraits. Well, as far as I'm concerned, all they're good for is putting me off my food. Mm, that's uh, Anella. I'd swear to it. Yes, Anella. Who, who's the subject? Uh, Rear Admiral Baskerville. Oh. Mr. Holmes, this is hardly relevant. Yeah, and, and Reynolds. No, 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 two, two. Who's this gentleman, the, the cavalier? Well, he's the cause of all the trouble. Sir Hugo, the first victim of the family curse. So, that's the notorious Hugo. <laughs> Fascinating. Holmes, what are you up to? I'm sorry to keep you up so late, Doctor, but this had to wait until Sir Henry had retired. Where are we going? The dining room. Here. This again? Haven't you stared at this wretched painting enough for one evening? Patience, Doctor. Family history is the key to this whole case, though we have to look rather more recently than the 17th century. You remember what Sir Henry told us? Hmm? There were three brothers. Mm, his father, Sir Charles, and Roger. Mm, I made a few inquiries. The first two were well documented. Information on the third mm, was rather harder to come by. Sir Henry told me he lived quietly and died unmarried. Mm, that's what he believes, the official family line. The truth is rather more colourful. Roger Baskerville fell foul of the law. When the family refused to protect him, he had to leave the country. He ended up in South America. Mm, the proverbial black sheep. Oh, yes. Extremely black and extremely secretive. I discovered that the records had been tampered with. There was a marriage and a son. A son? So if anything happens to Sir Henry... The son inherits the entire fortune. He's been steadily working his way to exactly that. So he's our man, this son? Oh, he's an interesting character. A double throwback to Sir Hugo here. Not only the personality, but the looks, too. Now, just take the candle. Mm. Now, hold it up. <coughs> now, if I mask off the beard and these rather extravagant curls, anyone you know, Oh, my God. Good morning. Mr. Holmes, you look like a general planning a battle. That is the exact situation. Watson was asking for orders. And so do I. Very good. I understand that you're dining with the Stapletons tonight. Well, I, I hope you'll come too. I'm sure they'd be delighted to see you. I'm afraid that's impossible. Watson and I must go back to London. To London? Now? Yes. I, I hoped you were going to see me through this business. I, I have a good mind to come with you. Why should I stay here, alone? Because I tell you to do so. Very well. You must do exactly as I say. You'll drive to Merripit House tonight, then you'll send Perkins and the trap back here. Tell him to explain to Barrymore that you plan to walk back to Baskerville Hall at the end of the evening. Across the moor? On foot? Yes. But damn it, that's the very thing you've always warned me never to do. This one time, you will do it. He was very hurt. He thinks we're deserting him. Can't be helped. You're putting him in great danger tonight. Yes, I know. There must be some other way. We've got a good enough case. Why don't we just go and arrest the villain? Watson, you're the eternal man of action. But stop and think for a moment. We have no actual evidence whatsoever. But sure. Neither would stand for a second in a British courtroom. Neither Sir Charles nor Selden bore any marks of violence. What about the anonymous letter? Ah, yes, the anonymous letter. Do you recall my smelling the paper? Yes, of course I do. And you discovered something too, but naturally you wouldn't say what. White jessamine. It's a woman's perfume. I'm perfectly well aware of what it is. Of course you are. Foolish of me. <laughs> well, there was the faintest trace still lingering on the paper. The sender was a woman. Hmm? Oh, I believe this is our stop. Coom Tracy. <laughs> Holmes. A woman sent that threat. As you value your life or your reason, keep away from the moor. That wasn't a threat, Watson. It was a warning, and it came from the murderer's wife. His wife? He has a wife? He has no wife. There is no doubt. Prove it. Prove it to me, and if you can... I've come prepared to do so. Here are documents, mm -hmm. written descriptions, and this photograph. It's endorsed Mr. and Mrs. Vandeleur. But the gentleman is quite recognisable. He used me. I'm afraid he did. 
He promised me marriage. He said he... Ask me anything you like, gentlemen. I'll conceal nothing. The letter you sent to Sir Charles, asking him to meet you in the grounds of Baskerville Hall. He dictated it. And then after you'd sent the letter, he gave you the money. He said that for another man to pay for my divorce would hurt his self-respect. <laughs> his self-respect. His one aim was to lure Sir Charles to the edge of the moor after dark. That was the sole reason for his interest in you. He told me the money was all he had in the world, but it didn't matter. He'd sacrifice anything to remove the obstacles to our happiness. Uh, the gentleman's an expert at removing obstacles. You're an extremely lucky woman, Mrs. Lyons. Lucky, Mr. Holmes? Uh. You're the one person who knew the truth. You had him in your power, and he knew it. And yet, you were still alive. It's ten o'clock. He can't be very long now. Holmes, the fog, what's what? The winds change. The fog is drifting from the Grimpen Mire straight towards us. It's the one thing on earth that could upset my plans. What was that? A light went out. The kitchen, I think. If he isn't out in five minutes, the path will be covered. Where, where is he? Where is he? Well, good night, Stapleton. Thanks again. You're being too kind. Neither of us had quite the evening we were expecting, I'm afraid. I've been looking forward to some exciting stories from Dr. Watson. Oh, he was sorry he had to rush away. And I dare say you found it horribly dull with just me for company. Oh, I, I hope I didn't make it that obvious. <laughs> oh, of course not. Beryl was so upset that she couldn't join us. Well, she's sensible to stay in bed if it's a bad chill. Uh, get Mortimer to look at her in the morning. He's a good man. I'll do that. And don't forget, dinner at the hall as soon as she's up to it. You're very generous. Hey, it's uh, getting misty. Please be careful on the way back. Well, don't worry. I'll be fine. Good night. Good night. Enjoy the walk. There he is. Thank God. He'll be here in a couple of minutes. Now get down, Watson. He mustn't see us. And have your revolver ready. were on fire. What manner of creature? Watson, if we can wound it, we can kill it. Ah! Come on! Where is it? Ah! This way! He's still alive. Oh, thank God. Mm. Now, just drink this. Mm. <coughs> Holmes? Watson? Easy, Sir Henry. Oh, what happened? Oh, dear God! Where is it? Where did it go? Don't, don't be alarmed. Look. Oh, my God. What in heaven's name is it? It's dead, whatever it is. We've laid the family ghost once and forever. You saved my life. Having first endangered it, I owe you a deep apology. I was prepared for a hound. But this... Phosphorus. It's painted with phosphorus. So, the ghost is no ghost after all. What does it all mean? It means that we must move swiftly. 
There's one more creature that must be brought to heel. Mr. Holmes, who? Who's behind this? Stapleton! 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 Holmes! Sir Henry! Wait, wait, wait. There. Is he safe? Has he escaped? He can't escape us, madam. Not my husband, Sir Henry. Beryl! Oh, thank heaven. The hound is dead. Oh. Holmes, where's that brandy? Oh, uh, here. Drink this. What did he do to you? <coughs> a whip and a club, too. Henry! It's all right. I know. I told him I was going to warn you. Tell you everything. Don't, don't try to speak. Tell me where he's gone. Mr. Holmes. I lied for him. Cheated. You know him. You know his mind. Where has he gone? What? Holmes, for pity's sake. Tell me. The mine. The old tin mine. In the heart of the Grimpen Mire, where he kept the hound. Come, Watson. No, it's deadly in this fog. Watson. Holmes. This is a filthy place. Uh, shine the lantern to your left. Where? Oh, God. Mortimer's spaniel. Stapleton must have kept the hound practically starved. Uh, this way. No. Holmes? The quicksand. Give me your hand. No! No! Stay back! Oh, stay back, I say! I, I Give me your hand! There! Yeah. Now! I can't. Hey. Hey. Thank you. You're welcome. This place is deadly. We must go back. A man under my protection nearly died tonight. Do you want Sir Henry to live the rest of his life in fear? Hmm? Give me the lantern. I'll leave. For heaven's sake, watch your footing. What? What is it? Uh, wait for the moon. Uh, Stapleton. And he hasn't seen us. Stapleton! You fool, Holmes! Go back! You can't escape me, Stapleton! I know everything! Give yourself up! You're helpless here! This is my world! Goodbye, Mr. Sherlock Holmes! I've lost him. There's not a break in the clouds coming. Then we'll have him. Come on, come on. Ah! What the devil? Help me! He's in the mire. Give me the lantern. I may be able to find a safe path. Holmes? For God's sake, give me the lantern! Holmes! Come on. Let's get back. That's better. Another drink. Ah, uh, thank you. <sighs> thank you. <clears throat> I underestimated him, Watson. I came close to throwing away Sir Henry's life. Mm, but you risked your own trying to bring him to justice. And yours. You saved mine. I never would have reached him. I'd have been in that quicksand the minute I stepped off the path. 
Holmes. <coughs> yes? What made you realise there was a real dog involved? The missing boots. Why return one and take another? Hmm? What made the second one different from the first? It had been worn. Hmm. And therefore carried Sir Henry's scent. The conclusion uh, was obvious. Hmm. And what finally put you onto Stapleton? He made a mistake. He told you something true amid all the lies. The school in the north? Yes. Yes, I thought so. The way he talked about it, I don't know. There was something in his voice. Yes, it wasn't an epidemic close to down. It was, um, well, let's just say the circumstances were atrocious. Oh, God. I discovered that the owner had disappeared with his wife. The names were different, but the descriptions matched exactly. And shortly afterwards, the Stapletons arrived on the moor. I suppose he thought she'd be more useful if everyone believed she was his sister. She was part of the plot. But not willingly. Oh, no. Oh, but in terror of her husband. Well, you saw what he did to her. I doubt if I'll ever forget it. Uh, she'll be all right. Oh, yes, yes. She's strong. Yeah. Well, it wasn't the first time she stood up to him. She drew the line at luring Sir Charles, so Laura Lyons had to enter the picture. That mire was an obscene place. Mm. The stench of decay and death everywhere. Stapleton loved it. He said the rarest and most beautiful butterflies came from there. Hmm. I have a box tonight at Covent Garden. Hmm? There's Huguenot. I don't think I know it. Maya beer. Improbable adventure and high romance. Sounds just my cup of tea. <laughs> Good old Watson. <coughs> can you be ready in half an hour? Mm, certainly. Then we can stop off for a little dinner on the way. Excellent. Come on then, my friend. Let's turn our minds to more pleasant matters. In Episode 2 of The Hound of the Baskervilles by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, Sherlock Holmes was played by Clive Madison and Dr. Watson by Michael Williams. Sir Charles Baskerville, Donald Sindon. Sir Henry Baskerville, Mark Leake. Stapleton, Ian Masters. Beryl, Rachel Atkins. Barrymore, Don McCorkindale. Mrs. Barrymore, Jenny Lee. Mrs. Lyons, Carolyn Jones. Franklin, John Woodnut. Dr. Mortimer Roger May, the postmaster Brian Parr. The violinist was Ian Humphreys. The music was arranged by Michael Haslam, who also played the piano. The Hound of the Baskervilles was dramatized for radio by Bert Cools and directed by Enid Williams. <laughs>